During the brutal winters of the Second World War, soldiers faced a merciless enemy that cared nothing for borders or bullets. The cold. Across the Eastern Front, North Africa, and even the Alps, men froze in trenches, inside tanks, and on mountain ridges where temperatures plunged below anything they had ever known. Many armies were unprepared, relying on wool and leather when what they really needed was insulation that could hold warmth without a flame. Out of this dire need came one of the most underrated inventions of the war, the soldier's blanket that trapped body heat for days. It wasn't glamorous, and it didn't come from a top-secret lab or a high-ranking officer's order. It came from the field, from necessity, and from an understanding of how to keep the human body alive when every degree mattered. Ah, the key to its performance lay in how it was used. You see, owning this kind of blanket was one thing, but using it properly was quite another. Field manuals from the period, they emphasised technique something many soldiers, well, they learned the hard way. In field tests, when soldiers used the blanket correctly, body to blanket to ground barrier, their internal temperature dropped only two degrees overnight, compared to a ten degree drop using standard issue wool. For modern survivalists, this principle remains vital. The concept of preheating before insulation can mean the difference between comfort and hypothermia. If you're in the field, wrap yourself in a reflective thermal sheet only after generating heat through movement. If you seal in cold air, you'll only preserve discomfort. Even though today's space blankets look far removed from those WD Toom field designs, the physics hasn't changed. Reflective insulation remains one of the most energy-efficient ways to retain warmth without external heat. Modern preppers, cold-weather campers, and even greenhouse builders borrow directly from this wartime invention. For instance, lining a greenhouse with reflective mylar descended from the same metallized film used in the 1940s helps redirect thermal energy back into the growing area, just like the soldier's blanket redirected heat back to its user. The ratio still holds true. A single reflective layer can retain 60 to 70 percent more heat than untreated fabric. That's not only efficient but cost-effective, the same logic that saved lives eight decades ago. In a wilderness scenario, you can replicate the same effect using a modern emergency blanket, wool, and a waterproof tarp. Lay the tarp on the ground, layer the wool on top, then place the reflective material over your body with the shiny side facing inward. You've just recreated a 1940s survival system that can keep you alive through the coldest night without fire or fuel. The soldier's heat-trapping blanket wasn't just about surviving cold, it represented the human ability to adapt. In a world at war, when technology focused on destruction, this quiet innovation focused on preservation. It was a small piece of gear, often overlooked in official reports, but it saved more lives than most weapons ever could. It reminds us that sometimes survival depends not on new inventions, but on understanding the principles that nature and physics already offer. Heat retention, reflection, layering, these aren't luxuries. They're lessons written in blood and endurance across the frozen battlefields of history. From its early days in the trenches of Finland to its influence on modern survival blankets, this piece of wartime ingenuity continues to serve. It's a perfect example of how necessity drives innovation, and how even the simplest designs can outlast the empires that created them.
So the next time you see a reflective emergency blanket folded in a first aid kit or a rescue pack, remember that humble item has a lineage that stretches back to soldiers shivering under shell fire, using science and willpower to outlast the cold. If you value stories of resilience, forgotten inventions, and wartime survival that shaped our modern world, subscribe to Echoes of Valor and share this episode with others who appreciate history not as nostalgia, but as knowledge worth keeping alive.